Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. The year is coming to an end and what a year it's been, with lots of reviews of some fantastic bits of kit. But the testing doesn't just stop when we finish a video. A lot of the items we talk about stays in our gear cupboard and we use it throughout the year. That means that we can develop our opinions on them and let you know if our thoughts change. So today we're going to look at a couple of items that we've had for a while and do a long-term review. When considering shells, it's easy to think that Gore-Tex is best, but there are other materials out there and brands are starting to utilise these more. In recent years, we've seen the very concept of a hard shell change from a straight shell protecting you from all the elements into a stretchier, more movable material. Now, the Black Diamond Highline is a jacket that utilises this principle. It uses BD's own dry material, which moves and stretches as you do. Therefore, for high octane active activities, this should be more suitable and perhaps it replaces the need for a soft shell. I wore this jacket all of last year and it's quickly become my fast and light option for hard shells. Last year, the lifts were shut, so if we wanted to do any skiing, well, we had to tour up. And therefore, having a jacket that was breathable was important. And I think that's why I like the Highline so much. It's really lightweight, only 360 grams. And with some gigantic pit zips, it means you can adjust the jacket to suit the amount that you're going to sweat. But of course, having a shell being waterproof and breathable is only half the point. It needs to be windproof as well. So what better activity to test that with than paragliding? Good. Okay, Terry, start running forward. <laughs> A lot of brands use a DWR finish that's washed into the jacket to add an extra layer of protection. And that's all very well and good, but you have to actually wash it back into a jacket after use, especially if you've washed it and cleaned it. Black Diamond, they took a different approach. Instead of using a straight DWR, they use GTT protection technology. That means that it's a PFC-free DWR that's baked into the individual fibres of the jacket. In fact, it's hyperfused into those fibres. That means that it should last forever. No need to rewash it, which saves on time. It allows the jacket to have a longer lifespan and it's better for the environment. But does it actually work? Let's see how waterproof your jackets really are. <laughs> <laughs> dry, dry, back to the studio. So after a year and a half, is this jacket still waterproof? Yeah, I mean, it really is. I found with some other jackets that you can notice wear and tear, especially in hard wearing sections like under backpack straps or around the waist. And that tends to rub off that DWR finish. With this, I've noticed no such problems. It's still waterproof, it still keeps me dry, so no complaints on that side of things. It's not in the same category as something like a, I don't know, an Arcteryx Alpha SV with you know, premium Gore-Tex Pro in it, but it's not meant to be. It's meant to be better value, lighter, more breathable and stretchy, and it does that perfectly. When I'm up in the mountains, when I'm doing sweaty, active sports, well, this is better, in my opinion, than a big old shell. I hated taking that heavy thing around, and now I don't need to. The Highline is still one of my favourites a year and a half later, and I've yet to wear a jacket that actually beats this for what it does. 
Now, I love climbing guidebooks. I've got loads of them, I collect them, and I really enjoy poring over them and discovering their secrets. But in recent years, and especially this year, we've seen an increase in people using apps on a smartphone. And on the surface of it, well, it's the perfect solution. You can fit more guidebooks on your phone, it's cheaper, and you don't have to carry around a heavy book whenever you go climbing. But are they worth it? So Rockfax has started to complement their physical books with the app. So is it time to stop buying guidebooks altogether? Well, yeah, kind of. There are some limitations. For example, the Rockfax app, well, you can only use Rockfax books. And although there are a lot of them, there are going to be some limitations depending on where you are in the world. So it's not the end of the guidebook yet. We're still waiting for that app that does everything. It's got all of the features of the book, maps, pictures of the crags and all of those lovely descriptions. But it's got more app style interactive elements to it as well. You can link it to your UKC guidebook. It's got a map that directs you to the crag. So if we pull up the map feature on the app, mm -hmm. then we can see all the crags that are in the guidebook. So we're sort of bang in the middle of Chamonix. We've been to Le Guillaume, which is the obvious close choice. So the next one looks like Le Joux. So, yeah, that's yeah. a cool little crag. Yeah, so we can then click on Le Joux and we can pull up in our app of choice, the way there. So either Google Maps or Waze or whatever. Okay, so there's a map and then I can click on the map. So when we drive there, there we go. I've got the directions. Perfect. Sweet. All right, let's jump in the car. 15 minutes drive. Let's do it. But for me, the most exciting thing with the app is it eliminates that thing that I think a lot of mountaineers do, which is to take a picture of the guidebook carry your phone up and have to sort of zoom in on, on various sections of the map and the description in order to know where you're going. With the Rockfax app, when I'm mountaineering, I simply download it, take it offline so I don't need GPS or 4G or whatever it is, and then I've got it all there. Cost is certainly a factor when considering the app. We're selling a six month subscription on the Epic TV shop for around 32 euros. That's about the same price as one guidebook. And for that, you get 40 guidebooks, 60,000 routes and 1,000 crags. So definitely better value for money. The main downsides for the app for me is kind of nostalgia. I like a guidebook and maybe I'm old fashioned in that. But the ability to write hand notes into my guidebook, to flick through, to share it with mates, I do miss that with an app. If you're watching this and it's still before Christmas, there's another advantage to an app, and that is you can buy it on the Epic TV shop and they simply send you an email. There's no postage costs, so you can get a last minute Christmas present if you've left it too late. Moving on from apps and back to clothing, and this is a hard shell, the Arcteryx Beta LT Pants. This is my first proper pair of hard shell trousers and I've really enjoyed using them. They use three layer Gore-Tex on them and they've got some great features. There's a nice faff-free belt system, covered pockets for waterproofability, if that's a word, and a reinforced shin patch area in case you puncture them with your crampons. These are lightweight but warm. Waterproof but breathable, and although the material isn't stretchy, I do have full range of movement in them. Perhaps what's most impressive, I haven't destroyed them, and I destroy most pairs of trousers. These look almost exactly the same as when I got them out of the packet. I do slightly miss a pair of braces on them. You know, something to hook them up over your shoulders, because they can kind of slip down a little bit sometimes when you're moving fast but then that would almost make them more of a complete ski trouser. So perhaps missing the point for an all round mountaineering trouser as well. The other downside, the cost. It's about 300 euros, which is expensive for a pair of trousers, 
But with everything Arcteryx, you're investing in them. These will last you for years. And if you spread that cost over the lifetime of the pair of trousers, well, it then becomes far better value if you can justify it like that. Okay, so long-term reviews of those items. Just some thoughts as we sort of go through the year. And we do use all the equipment that we show on these gear shows. It's not just me and Teresa talking. We put this stuff properly to the test. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and there's links to all of these items as usual. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.